I thank God for people who have been used to usher in His presence. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. This morning, the Lord gave me a message entitled, The Arrow of the Lord's Deliverance. Mm. The Arrow of the Lord's Deliverance. Glory. Hallelujah. So, our church um, in Meridian, Mississippi, had... Um, felt a call to go to the Mall of Washington two weeks ago. And what it was is a man named Lou Abel had called a million women to prayer on the Mall of Washington. And our church had decided that they were gonna send a busload of us to the Mall of Washington. And I remember when our pastor had had shared it with us because he shared it with us and I'm sitting there and I'm calculating in my head how pregnant I am. <laughs> and I'm like, it's a 16 hour bus ride, okay? And I was like, okay, by that time, I'm gonna be five weeks away from giving birth. And then I realized that the, the weekend that this is happening, I have a business conference that I had already paid for. And I remember sitting in my seat and I remember saying, Lord, would you have me to go? And in the natural, you would say, well, you know, you already paid for this business conference. You're five weeks away from giving birth. It probably in the natural doesn't look like that great of an idea, right? And the Lord said to my heart, and I want to ask us as parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, um, people that are in children's lives. The Lord spoke to my heart and said, what kind of inheritance do you want to leave your children? What kind of inheritance do you want to leave your children? Because what this was all about, it was a, is a movement called Don't Mess With Our Kids. Don't mess with our kids. Okay, we're pulling it up. That's the bus full of women that our church had sent. And you can go to the next slide there. And keep, keep on going. I want y'all to be able to see how many. This, I mean, when I tell you, there wasn't just women there. There was women, children, men. There was millions of people wow. on the Mall of Washington. <laughs> And the Lord spoke to my heart. I got off the bus. Now, when you go to events like this, sometimes your guard is up because you really don't know like what all, all of those different people there was actually going to be taking place, you know? So I get off the bus, and as soon as my feet hit the floor, you could feel the tangible presence of God. Glory. Like God was saying, I'm here. <laughs> If you go to the next one, I want y'all to be able to see. So the monument is in the back. Look at the, all those people. Wow. And the Lord spoke to my heart and reminded me of the book of Acts. And he reminded me that they were all assembled together in one accord. Yeah. I'm going to tell you something. They're from 9 o'clock in the morning till 7 o'clock at night. That's how long we were there. Nine o'clock in the morning till seven o'clock at night. Y'all think our services here are long? <laughs> Better buckle in. You gonna have service in heaven all the time. Hallelujah. Just want y'all to know. Yes. In case you didn't. Yes. But I tell you that we sat there from nine to seven and worshiped and prayed and 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 wreaked havoc on the devil's kingdom for these children and for this next generation. We prayed for Israel. Israel was one of our, our, our bigger uh, subjects there. So the, the, the um, Washington DC right there, the Capitol's right there. So you can see it right in your, in your, in your line of fire. And I'm telling you, it was just, it was something to experience. And I wanted to bring this here because, keep going if you will. 
That's our pastor's wife with all them flags. <laughs> I told her I was going to bring her with me to Louisiana and show everybody. But she's a warrior. I'll tell you what, there was this guy riding his bike around. And it was the only thing that I saw that was really weird. And he had a sign on that said, Pastor Matt, he said a sign on that said, I am Jesus. And on his bike, it was weird because he had like this dome thing over his bike. And it had all this like satanic wow. uh, like sayings and all that stuff. I said, is there a bomb in that thing? Like, because it was like a dome, you know what I mean? And she stands up, little fiery little thing. And she said, you be saved in Jesus' name. And, and I was like, oh, my goodness. <laughs> but I tell you, but for real, though, the enemy was coming in because imagine that many believers, that power. God, and this guy's riding his bicycle around with all this satanic wow. stuff on it. I said only a demon mm, <laughs> that was influencing this man could have done something like that. Keep on going for me. Yep, so there's this more pictures. So if you just keep on going. So what I want to say is this. Is Jesus in the book of Acts, he didn't, he didn't ask the question, will you assemble together? <laughs> He commanded them to assemble together. Yes. He didn't, it wasn't an option. He's saying, I want you to assemble together. And I want you to tarry. I want you to wait for the promise of the Father. That's wait, tarry, endure until you receive what God has for you. And we as the church become lazy and lackadaisical. And, and we come in. switch. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But they're close as <coughs> art classes or gym classes. And in other states, if your child wants to do that, they are allowed to take your child from you. Wow. Lord knows. Could you imagine the state taking your child from you? <coughs> I mean, you want to talk about mama bear? Oh, yeah. But there's nothing you can do about it. And I began to wet weep because I was like, what would we do? What would you do if your child was ripped from your arms and there was nothing you could do about it? Because they were indoctrinating them mm. in school. They're doing that in other states. Yeah, yeah. What are we going to do as a church? What are we going to do in the spirit? You hear what I'm saying? I'm not trying, I'm, I'm trying to catch your attention because it got mine. Because I looked at my daughter and I was like, what would I do? And there's nothing those parents could do besides fighting the spirit. And I said, God, help us to fight now before we even get there. Before it touches Patterson or Meridian and it, and it touches these other states. God, we're going to believe you to turn the tide now so that we don't 
still have to face those things. Uh, these parents were given testimony of their kids still in the system because they took them. Wow. Wow. And doing whatever they wanted to do with them, whatever the child decides. We live in a society that has warped and twisted our mindset. And God wants to bring us back. Yes. And it's only by, it's not by money. It's right. not by right. power. Right. But it's by it's my spirit, says yes. the Lord. But we as the church have to stand up and pray and believe God. What's our prayer life look like? Are you, listen, one of the things I've been doing is I get a picture of my family, and I literally, and we've been doing it in our church too, and I literally go down each child and each, my husband and each person, and I go, woo her through your family. You have no idea what it's doing in the spirit. You might not feel it, but God is working. Yeah, that's right. We need to be praying for this nation. That's right, yes. And if you would go to, keep going. We went, me and Hillary were actually interviewed. It was kind of cool. We went to David's tent. But go to the, I think it's the last photo of you. Oh, go to the next one. That's ever, all the women that went from our church. But if you go to the last one, here we go. All right, I want to tell you this. So we experienced the presence of God in, in, in that way on the ground. But God doesn't want to do something so say he does something in you in church on Sunday morning. But he wants it to continue. He wants it to follow you home. Right, right. He wants it to be yes. in your car. Yes. He wants it to yes. be in your workplace. Yes. He doesn't want yes. it to just be here. Yes. Yes. So he, so we experienced him on the mall of Washington. But I tell you, we got on this bus on the way home. And for three hours, Pastor Matt, Three hours, one girl said, I wanted to be filled with the Holy Ghost. And another older lady in the congregation said, okay, let's pray for you. When I tell you, that girl got filled with the Holy Spirit on a bus ride home, and the whole bus erupted. For three hours, the last three hours of the trip, the Lord began to move. And we pray for, we have a girl that's losing her eyesight that's my age. We pray for blinded eyes to be open. We pray for deaf ears to be unstopped. We got a couple people hard of hearing that were on the bus. We pray for women who have wounds that have not been bearing children to be open. I mean, when I tell you that the power of God moved on that bus, he doesn't want to just do it in one place. He wants to do it here. And he wants our children to experience it. But what our job is as believers, as vessels, is to usher in the presence of God. Yes, yes. What are we doing to do that? You hear what I'm saying? God convict me of my prayer life if it's not what it should be. Yes, Lord. Convict me of my devotional life if it's not what it should be. Convict me if I'm not coming into your presence the way that I should be. Because we're the ones that are going to stand in the gap for the things to come. Yes, yes. Right, right. Don't expect the government to do it. That's right. That's we right. as the church got to rise up. Right, right. We've got to touch heaven. We've got to call heaven down and pray for your pastors. Yes. Amen. It's, it's tiring, y'all. Yes. And you do it everybody's opinions and beliefs. And I'm, I'm, can I be honest? Yes. I'm going to defend you today, Pastor Matt, because I love you. Amen. When that, I'm telling you, when this man stands right here, every service, every time I come here, my heart is overwhelmed. Jesus. And I'm not just saying that because I'm trying to fluff his feathers. Jesus. I mean that. Amen. Because I know he's praying. That's right. <laughs> I want to sit under a praying man of God. That's right. A woman of God. Amen. I want to know they're hearing from God and touching heaven. Amen. I would go to war with Pastor Matt. Amen. That's right. I right. would. That's right. I would. The Bible says, put honor in honor in this was a song that began to come over me as I was at this event. 
And it says this. The liar has come to rob my joy. I might be bruised, but I'm not destroyed. Amen. I'm rising like an army, and you're going to hear the sound. I'm calling the angels down. I'm storming the gates of hell. Tell that devil he don't own my soul. I'm taking back what the enemy stole. I'm raising the battle cry. I'm holding the banner high. With the power of the Holy Ghost, I'm taking back what the enemy stole. You can't speak your lies over my family. No. You can't break the promise that I'm standing on. There's only one name I gotta say, and that's the name of Jesus. That's the name of Jesus. And as the Lord was finishing up this work here on this bus and this prayer meeting, he spoke this to me. He said, Angela, he said, get ready. Because every time I move, the enemy wants to move too. Every time God moves, the enemy wants to come in and rob from what God has done. Right. And the Lord dropped this in my heart. The arrow of the Lord's deliverance. 2 <coughs> Kings 13, 15. 2 Kings 13, 15 says this. And Elijah said unto him, Take the bow and arrows. And he took it unto him, the bow and arrows. And he said to the king of Israel, put thy hand upon thy bow. And he put his hand upon it. And Elijah put his hand upon the king's hand. And he said, open the window eastward. And he opened it. And then Elijah said, shoot. And he shot. And he said, the arrow of the Lord's deliverance. And the arrow of the Lord's deliverance from Syria and thou shalt smite the Syrians of Adipet till thou hast what consumed them. And he said, take the arrow. And he took them. And he said unto the king of Israel, smite it upon the ground. And he smote it thrice, meaning three times. And then he stayed, it says. That means he stopped. And the man of God was wroth with him. He was upset with him. And said, Thou hast should have smitten it five or six times. Then thou would have smitten Syria and you would have consumed it. Where, where is now thou shalt smite Syria but three times? Mm. What I want to talk to you today is the difference between living in partial victory and living in complete victory. Mm. Yes. God does not want his people to live in partial victory. He does not want his people living in only a part of what he has already done rather than the whole. That's right. God said, when he said it is finished, he said it was complete. Right? right. It is done. You can walk in victory today. Your family can walk in victory today. Your marriage can walk in victory today. Your we can have victory in our finances. We can have victory in our heart, in our emotions, in our mind. We can have victory over sin and bondage and despair. We can have victory over anxiety. and Because and, even the things that I talked about today, I mean, that can create a fear and anxiety. You know what I mean? Like what? But God is saying, no, I have already provided the victory for you. Now it's our job. It kept saying in, the, in that scripture, take, do, take, do, take, do, take. There's something as believers that we need to to do in our relationship with the Lord. John 19, 28 says this. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, he said, I thirst. When Jesus therefore received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. 
and he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. It is finished or probably three of the most greatest words spoken in all of scripture. Amen. Meaning it is, is it a, it's accomplished, it's complete, it's come to an end, it's finished. Your debt is already paid. I already provided it for you. The work is already done. Jesus already completed the mission. He already fulfilled the law. He already made the ultimate sacrifice. It is completed. But sometimes we live in a partial place of that completion. Why? Because of our own faith. Yeah. Or lack thereof. <clears throat> or because we don't want to come to him. But God is saying to you this morning, I don't want you to live in a partial place. Mm -hmm. I want you to live in complete victory. That's right. And how does that come forth? Your prayer life is essential. Yeah. It's essential. Yeah. It's like the umbilical cord. If my child wasn't connected to the umbilical cord, then he wouldn't be getting the nutrients and the things that he needs in order to survive. Right, right. And our prayer life is contingent upon the same thing. Mm. You hear what I'm saying to you this morning? Yes. We have become lazy. Yes. I'm sorry. I love you all. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> but it's the truth. Yeah. Yep. I have, I can say I have, as I became a mother and a business owner and a, and a wife and all these different things, I can become lazy in my prayer life. Where I used to get up in the morning and pray, and now look, everybody got to move with the way their life is going. But when I used to get up in the morning and pray for an hour at least, sometimes I find myself getting up in the morning and praying for five minutes. Now listen, I'm not saying that five minute prayer that God don't hear. But I'm saying there's a locking in that he's looking for. Mm -hmm. Now whether you do that in the midnight hour, like Naya. Yeah. Naya likes to say like her and my husband. I can't even make it past like 930. <laughs> I can't, but I'll get up at five. You gotta find your spot. Right, right. But I'm saying you lock in. Yes. And you hold on. And you don't let go until God. It's the press. Yes. But we become lazy in the press. That's right. Yeah. We become, oh, well, Lord, I don't feel your presence, so I just got to go. You remember when you liked somebody before? <laughs> or somebody liked you? And they wouldn't stop pursuing you or you wouldn't per stop pursuing them or calling them or texting them or showing up or whatever it is until you got their attention. Yeah. Well, that's what we need to do with the Lord. God, I need you. God, I need you. I'm not leaving this spot until you show up. I'm not leaving this spot. I'm not moving until I see you. Listen to them. Lay hold of it. 
grab hold of it. Be okay with being uncomfortable. Be okay with not knowing the words to say. Be okay. God, I don't know what I'm supposed to say to you, Lord, but I hear your spirit calling me. And I hear what she's saying. God, help me to touch heaven. God, help me to pray. Yes. God, help me to learn. Yes. God, teach me. For you're the teacher. Disciples said, Lord, teach us to pray. Yes, yes. He didn't say teach us to preach, teach us to sing, teach us to cast out demons. Right, teach us. Right. He said teach us to pray. Mm. That's good. Thank you, Jesus. Why? Because it's essential. Yes, yes. It's essential for you to invite the Holy Spirit to intervene into your life. God, intervene in my heart, intervene in my marriage, intervene in my mind, intervene in the way that I look at things, intervene in my church, intervene in my children, intervene in the schools that they go to. God, help us, oh God, to take a righteous standard. Help us to not back down. Yes. You hear what I'm saying this morning? Because I'm going to tell you this. In this story, was during a season of immorality and idolatry. Pastor Matt, you see what I said, Pastor Matt always going to say something I'm saying. And I love it because I know the Lord's in it. Amen. Hallelujah. They were on a, a, a moral decline. Can I get a witness? Mm -hmm. We are in a moral decline Help us, as a nation. Yes. We are in a moral decline as a church. Help us, Lord. God help us as individuals and as family units to not be in the same moral decline. God help us to not allow idolatry to rule our lives. That means putting something before the Lord. Even our own opinions or ideas. Yeah. Or agendas, mm -hmm. thought thought process. Amen. Israel and Judah found themselves in disunity, and the nation was on a decline. Do we see our nation divided? Yeah. Is it divided? Yes. Yeah. Is the church divided? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Help us. We're in the state that Israel was in at this time. And 1 Kings 18, 21 says this. Elijah came to the people and said, how long will you halt between two opinions? If the Lord be Lord, follow him. If Baal be Baal, then follow him. And the people answered not a word. How long will you hesitate? That's right. Instead of just laying on our face in prayer and saying, God, change 
this nation, change the state and the condition of the church. Let me tell you, when we were in Washington, there was no, like, there was no denomination, Pastor Matt. I don't even know where half these people went to church. I don't know if they were Baptist, Catholic, Pentecostal, Apostolic. I don't know what they were. All I know is every single one of us was on our face in prayer. When they said stand up, we stood up. When they said get on your face, we got on our face in the dirt in Washington. When they said tear the devil's kingdom down, we tore it down. When they said worship, we worship. Pass them out. It was all in one court. Wow. Okay. Yes, yes. And every race, mm, every okay. ethnicity, because we were there on one mission yes, to yes. fight for our children and our nation. Yes, yes. And we get in these little circles and we get all messed up. God, help us. That's right. Help us to fight. Mm. Help us to see the bigger picture here. Mm. Help us to get out of our own thoughts. Mm. And God, help us to see the mission that we're on. If God be God, follow him. If Baal be Baal, follow him. One of the main purposes of this book was God's faithfulness to his covenant, regardless of his children's actions. God is going to be faithful. He's going to be faithful. Yes. Yes. What are we going to do as a church? God is commanding all men everywhere to repent. Mm, amen. All men and women <laughs> and children everywhere to repent. That was one of the main things you've seen at this conference. Repentance is key. Yeah. Because it gives the Holy Spirit access to your heart. God forgive me. Yes, Lord. God forgive us. Yes, Lord. God forgive our nation. Yes. What do I have to do with the nation's sin? I'm sure you said the wrong line. Yeah. Daniel, when he was crying out for the nation, said, God forgive us mm. as a nation. Yeah. So I want to look at this. The condition that they were in. Joab, I'm going to paraphrase because it's a lot. Joaz was the king at the time when sin started reigning. And in 2 Kings 13, 2, it says, He did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord, in the sins of Jeroboam, of the son of Nebat, which made Israel sin, and he did not depart from them. Let me say this. Our actions matter. That's right. They matter. What we do in front of our children, in front of our friends, in front of our workplace, it matters. Because this says that because of his sin and the direction he was going, the nation followed. And that speaks to me as a mother, as a leader. I'm not here to beat y'all up this morning. Yeah. But I'm here to open our eyes. Yes. It matters. Look, my baby girl, she's in the other room. My dog was cutting up. And I took my slipper. And I beat my dog's butt with it. And the next thing you know, I put my dog outside. And my little girl has got my slipper. And she's smacking it on the ground. And she's going, no, 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 no. And I said, oh, Lord. But you know what it shows me? Is that she's watching every little move mommy makes. And the Bible is that he didn't come to condemn the world, but it came to save us through him. And what I'm saying is, is that what we do in front of our children, in front of our friends, in front of our family, it matters. God, stop me. Mm. 
Cause me to stop if I'm going in the wrong direction. Yes, Lord. Cause me to shut my mouth. Yes, Lord. If I need to. Yes, Lord. Cause me to stop listening to gossip and slander. Amen. <laughs> and backbiting. Amen. And I'll never forget this. Naya's mama said this to us one time. She said, Gossip stops at a righteous ear. Mm, that's so good. Preach. I never forgot it. I mean, that was like 12 years ago. That's so good. Amen. I'll never forget. Because if you are wanting to do what's right in the eyes of God, you're like, no, I don't even need to hear all that. Thank you. Come again. <laughs> don't you worry what other people think about you. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Let God be God. Yeah. Yes. Oh, God help us yes. to know that the world is watching us. Yes. I'll never forget Robert telling me a story, and, and at the end of the story, he he said, "Are you going to be able to go witness to that person now?" However, we act in front of people. I tell my husband all the time. I said he got he, and he 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 did what mommy saying this. But he got some road rage. <laughs> and I said, baby, if they show up on Sunday morning at Evangel Temple and you up there playing your guitar and singing and you just told them off on the way here, are you going to be able to minister to them people? Amen. You know what I'm saying? Now, I do stuff like that. I, I'm not exempt. But if that's the one thing we laugh about it. But y'all know what we're talking about in the car. You think you can get away with it because you're in your own vehicle. But you pull up alongside them, honking the horn. All of a sudden, they in front of you at Walmart. Jesus loves you. We can't wait to see that people like that. God, convict me. Yes, Lord. Of my actions. Help me to be the leader that you are asking me to be in my sphere of influence that you are asking me to be it in. Because let me tell you, not everybody's called to this, that, or the other, but you do have grandchildren and children and friends and family and work um, co workers that you influence. That's right. And God is saying, you are to be my vessel for my kingdom and for my glory. Amen. And what direction are you leading them in? And if look, and we've all done it, so just repent. Yep. God forgive me. Change me. And guess what? It ain't no shame in going to the person and saying, you know what? I know you heard me cuss so and so out yesterday. God is changing my heart. <laughs> Amen. And you know what? Forgive me for that. Amen. Ain't no shame in that. It's humbling. You're going to have to eat a piece of humble pie. Yes, yes. Okay. Go to your children. Baby, I'm so sorry. Mom spoke to you like that. Well, why should I have to say anything? They're my children. They live under my roof. You want them to see Jesus? Yes. yes. Yep. Preach it. That's good. You want them to see Jesus? Let them see you repent. Yes. Yep. Let them while well, they're mine. Mm -mm. No, don't stick your chest up like that and puffed up like that's an old pride. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. God help me. Yeah. yeah. Change me. Yeah. Let me let me not go with the flow of the moral decline of yes. the nation yes. of God. Wow. God, but I pray, Lord Jesus, yes. that I go yes. with the flow of your spirit, yes. oh God. God, and that people would yes. see Jesus in this climate. Yes, Lord. People are looking. For relief. Yep. They looking for peace. Yep. They looking for they're looking for God. And they don't know it. <laughs> and God is commanding all men everywhere to repent. Yes. Acts 17 30 says this, and the times of ignorance, God winked. But now he commandeth all men everywhere to repent. Yes. To think differently, to change directions, to have a godly sorrow over their sin. Are you allowing the Holy Spirit to break your heart? Amen. Are you allowing him to show you you? Come it's on. not your wife's fault. Come on. It's not your husband's fault. It's not your friend's fault. It's not your children or your boss's fault. Yeah. Even though, say they're wicked, okay? God, what is it that you want to get at, at me? Yes. 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 
change me. Amen. Because when you stand before God one day, you ain't gonna be. I'm not gonna be able to say, "Well, you should have seen the way Pastor Matt presented that." <laughs> he didn't present it right, Lord. <laughs> Lord's gonna be like, "Did you get in your Bible? <laughs> Did you read the Word for yourself?" Preach. Help us. Help us all. Help, Help us. us. If you know what to do, Bible says James 4, 17, therefore to him that knoweth, to properly to see, to be aware of, to do good, and does not do it, it is sin. If God has convicted you of something, and you insist on having your own way, it is sin. And we need to repent. Amen. Amen. Nope. We live in a season where the enemy has gotten us to believe that good is evil and evil is good. Amen. Even in the church house. Mm, come on. Help us. And my Bible says in 2 Kings 13, 3, that the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel. God's people. He was mad at us. Mm -hmm. he, he, the world is going to be the world. That's right. Yeah, yeah. They're not claiming his name. That's right. That will help you live amongst the world, by the way. <laughs> if you live and you feel like, well, why, why are they acting way this way? Why? If they're not believers, then guess what? They won't act like the world. That's right. That's all they know. That's right. Now it gets touchy when we start living amongst believers and we wonder why believers act like that. Come on, sister. Preach. That's the truth. Preach. But you don't serve those people. You serve God. Amen. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. So don't come into the church house and say, well, I, you should have seen the way she was acting in a, in a parking lot. Why <laughs> don't you look in the mirror? Let's look in the mirror. When's the last time I acted like that? Probably yesterday. <laughs> Lord help her. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. We do that all the time. That's right. And we want to pick everybody apart. And then we off to the races. And we try to go to this church and that church and this church and that church. Because this person rubbed me the wrong way. And that person rubbed me the wrong way. They didn't say it the way I want to say it. They don't sing the songs I want them to sing. They don't put the words up the way I want them to put them up. They don't have the bathroom or the kids' ministry set up the way I just, I, I think it should be set up. Help us, Lord. Preach. And the nation is going to hell in a handbasket. Come on. And we sit up here fighting amongst us in the church. Help us. And our kids are watching. Mm. That's one of the things I can't stand Facebook for. Because mm. we got Christians arguing about the most stupid stuff on Facebook. <laughs> and it makes us look so stupid. It does. Yeah. I'm sorry. That's you. Delete it. <laughs> <laughs> Find that delete button. Be its best friend. Mm. Because I'm telling you, there are so many times I wanted to voice my opinion on a platform like that. And the Lord said, Angela, mm. it's just folly. Mm. Fools in their folly. Mm. And it makes the church look stupid. Mm, Who wants to follow that? Just preach Jesus. Yes. Just Jesus. Yep. That's all. Amen. We ain't got a debate. I ain't got no time. I really don't. Amen. Now my husband might. But <laughs> <laughs> I don't that's nice. I don't have a debate button in me. I really don't. Look, we can go to scripture. What's the word say? That's all I want to talk about. Amen. That's it. Yep. I don't want to go down this hole or that hole. Be like Alice in Wonderland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ain't got nowhere to go. God help us. Help yes. us all. Help us, Lord Jesus. Yes, Jesus. And the anger, the anger of the Lord was kindled against them. I got to read this, and I want y'all to hear me, because this is the condition of the nation. Are y'all with me? Y'all yes. okay? Everybody's yes. all right. Yes. Okay. The anger, anger of the Lord was kindled against them. The Lord 
delivered them, it says in 2 Kings 13, 3. He, hear this, delivered his people into the hand of Azel, the king of Syria, and into the hand of Benadad, the son of Azel, all their days. God will give you over to your own affections if you insist on continuing in that direction. Come on. Yep. If you are insistent, God, I'm just going to do my own thing. <coughs> Romans 121. Put this up with me, Aunt Haley. Romans 121. I want y'all to hear this. I'm just going to read through the scripture. I'm going to let it speak for what it is. Because they knew God, they glorified him not as God. So what they do, they knew God, but they didn't continue to fully surrender to him as God. Neither were they thankful. Y'all ever have an ungrateful kid and you know they ain't thankful? Ooh, that rubs me the wrong way. Lord Jesus, help me with that one. But that's how we are with the Lord. Come on. <laughs> He's done all this for us, and we spit in his face and Come say, help us, we Lord. just want to do our own thing. I think my way is better. Yeah. Well, who made you God? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can't do his job. I don't know about y'all, but. But they became vain, empty. In their imaginations, and their foolish heart were darkened. If God shines a light in your heart and you reject the light, the light rejected will be removed. That means, have you all ever sinned against the Lord and then you insist on staying in it and then you feel, has anybody ever felt their heart start getting hurt? Come on, yeah. sister. Yeah, yeah. I've been there and it's dark. Yes. I mean, Naya told me one time I really scared her. Because <laughs> I insisted that I wanted to go this one direction. But each step I took in that certain direction changed my character. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, Help thank you. Lord. Yes, yes. <laughs> but it's true. Because our heart becomes hard towards the Holy Ghost. Yes. And then you don't allow him to have his way. Right, right. And then all of a sudden you down in a hole somewhere you don't want to be in. Right. Come on, you better preach. That's the truth. And our heart is hard towards that thing. And it takes a shaking yeah. for him to wake us back up. Thank you for your shaking. I mean, I... He let me feel how hard my heart was. Well, it was scary, Pastor. Oh, yeah. He let me feel how hard my heart was getting, and it actually scared me. Because I was like, you know, <laughs> it ain't worth it. It ain't worth it. Whatever it is in your life that we might hold on to, it is not worth it. Yeah. Let it go. Yeah. Though it be guilt, let it go. Though it be shame, let it go. Though it be um, resentment, and bitterness and anger. Anger will choke it out. Yeah. The life of God out of you. Yeah. Yeah. That would be bondage or sin. Yeah. Or, or yeah. Um, you're easily frustrated. Or easily impatient. Ooh. Yeah. I don't want to wait. It's taking too long, Lord. You hear what I'm saying? And God will allow you to be consumed with that thing. In hopes that you would repent. Listen, he's talking to his people here. Romans 1.22. Professing them to be wise, they became fools. Mm. Wow. All right. Oh, what? I got one child in here. Okay. Well, I want to read this because this is some of the things they talked about at the event. And I want y'all to hear this. I, professing to be wise, they became fools. Identifying we are identifying as a people now as something that we are not. I seen a, a thing the other day that they're trying to create robots that can have babies for us now. They can house our babies. 
in the name of not wanting women to die on the table, what in the world? Ain't no baby, ain't no robot housing my child. Okay, I'm gonna house this baby. And I'm gonna feel every movement. And I'm gonna bond with my child. Because God created yes, it that yes, way. Yes, yes, right. In the name of convenience, mm. I'm gonna stick my eggs in, in a robot. Yeah. What are we coming to, y'all? Oh, Killing babies at the last trimester. Killing babies at all. Grown men going into women's bathrooms. Let me tell you something. If I see a man enter into a bathroom with my daughter, we don't have a problem. That's right. That's right. We talked about all these different things and repented as a nation. But listen, they're legalizing this stuff in states and professing to be wise. They became fools. Mm. Yeah, yeah. You see in the scripture come to life? <clears throat> Wherefore God gave them up to their own uncleanness, Romans 124, through their own lusts, their own longing desires, of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Romans 126. For this cause, God gave them up to their own vile, disgraceful, that's what that means, affections. For their women did change the natural use into that which was against nature. Likewise did the men. They're talking about homosexuality. And even as they did, 28, not like to retain God in their knowledge. Let me say this again. They did not want to retain God in their knowledge any longer. That's where we're going. As a, That's where it's headed as a nation. I don't want to retain God or his word in my knowledge. I will not exalt him as God. I will not glorify him. I will not be thankful. I, and God says, okay, you insist as a nation to go in that direction. I will give you over to your own vile affections. And that's what we're seeing. Yes. Yes. Until the church shakes a stand. Amen. Stop fighting amongst ourselves. And stand for what's right. That's right. Amen. It says this, Romans 1. Listen, to y'all, but this was his people. Yeah, come on. It says they knew him as God. But they didn't glorify him as God. Romans 129, being filled, that word filled means sinking deeper and deeper and deeper until you are covered with all uncleanness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit. Malignity, whispers, backbiters, haters of God, disrespectful. I see that a lot in our children. Why? Because we got parents that are disrespectful and despiteful. Proud, boasters, inventors of evil things. Did we not just talk about that? Disobedient to parents. Without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, in, in place, how do you say that? Implacable. Implacable, unmerciful. Who knowing the judgment of God, what did they do? They knew the judgment of God. They which commit such things are worthy of death. Not only do the same, check this out. But have pleasure in doing them. Mm. They got to the point that they took pleasure in their sin. God, please intervene. Show up. Have you ever been there though as a believer? There's something that you want. 
and you take pleasure in it. Come on. And you insist. Yeah, yeah. I've been there. <clears throat> it can even be holding a grudge. <laughs> That's right. You enjoy being angry. If it tastes good, spit it out. <laughs> <laughs> you enjoy that spot because you got some type of control. But really, that thing's controlling you. That's right. Yeah. You're not controlling it. That's right. God, I don't want to find myself right here. And I don't want to find the church right here. And I don't want to find the nation right here. God, what can we do? So what the Lord does is it says he gives us over to our own devices in hopes that you would repent. He allows it to take you into captivity so that you would wake up and realize this isn't the state or the condition I want to live in. So God, help me to change and turn back to you. Second Timothy 2.26 says this, and that they may what? Recover themselves. That means regain your senses. Anybody ever been drunk before or done drugs before? And then when you wake up in the morning, you come to? Yeah. Right, right. You ever been in a fit flying rage before? And be tearing everybody up down one side and the other. And then an hour later, you kind of calm down and you're like, Whoa. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I did some damage there. Yeah. Now you gotta go back and undo the damage. Let me tell you something. Words hurt. Yes. Words do damage. There is the power of life and death in the tongue. Be careful what you say. To your to your spouse, to your children, to your co-workers. Amen. Be careful what you say behind other people's backs. Because it still has power. Okay. It's a little rudder that steers the direction of your boat, of your ship. But God allows it that they may recover themselves. That means come to a place of soberness. Something that had impaired your judgment is no longer impairing your judgment anymore. Amen. And it says... Out of the snare, out of the trap, out of the noose. It says, of the devil. The devil was trying to take you captive and had a noose around your neck. Wow. That's the picture. And was tightening just a little, just a little more, just a little more. And God is saying, I allowed it. That you would come to your senses. Yeah. Yeah. And it says, who are taken captive by him at his will. <clears throat> Let me tell you this. The Lord dropped this in my spirit in prayer a couple days ago. And he said, Satan's tactics are unwarranted. Unwarranted means that they, he has no legal foothold on you. When you are a child of God, you are born legally into the kingdom of God by the blood of Jesus Christ. And that means that all Satan's tactics and snares are unwarranted. They are illegal against the kingdom of God. He has no foothold and no place in your life as long as you don't allow him to. Amen. That's right. Amen. Don't give in. Don't quit. Don't give over to that thought process. Don't allow your emotions to drive you in the wrong direction. Don't allow your frustrations, your offenses to put a fence between you and him. Or you and others that love you for the kingdom of God. Don't allow yourself to be taken captive. And what happened? I'm going to skip over a lot of this. God would deliver and Israel would go right back. God would deliver and Israel would go right back into their sin. 
And the leaders, the king after king after king, kept leading the people in the wrong direction. Have you found yourself in that place before? I found myself in that place before. God will come and deliver me out of something. And then all of a sudden I find myself back in it. Paul said, he said that the, the one who wrote most of the New Testament, there's a war within my members. He said, I do what I don't want to do. <laughs> and I don't do what I should do. God, who can deliver me from this body of death? But Jesus Christ himself can. And he made a legal work on Calvary that said that he can. So he was saying this. Church, do you want to live in partial victory? Or do you want to live in a completed victory? And I'm going to ask you. And I'm going to give you instructions because the Lord gave me these instructions. Preach it. And then I'm closing here. Hey, I didn't do bad, Pastor Matt. <laughs> Second Kings 13, 14. Elijah, this great man of God who's seen all these miracles and did all, and seen God work all these wonders was lying on his deathbed. And who, who can agree with me that the words that you speak when you're lying on your deathbed are probably the most, some of the most important words you're, you're ever going to speak? What you're going to say to those loved ones that are around you. What you're going to leave instructions. Think about it. At the end of your life, what are you going to say? And Elijah is, Elisha is lying on his deathbed. And the king at that time finds his people in oppression of the enemy and all of a sudden he gets a wake up call and he's like you know what I'm going to go to that prophet <laughs> I'm going to go to that man of God because the people are in a state of captivity that's us as a church as a nation as a people God help us and Lord he says I'm going to go to Elijah and he goes to Elijah can I say this too? When I read this, I said, God, let me be like that, like Elijah. That somebody recognizes the power of God upon my life. And when they're in a state or condition that they need freedom from, that they want to come to me. And I could be, I could pray them through. You know what I mean? Let that be us. Let that be our heartbeat as a church. God, the nation around us and people around us, instead of us walking through the world so judgmental, can we say, God, the people around us are dying. Yes. And they're living in a state of captivity, and I want to see them live in a state of victory. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. God, help me to be like Elisha that is willing to take a stand at the end of my life at this part of I want to be like that. And if I'm not, Lord, help me to be like that. Because look, those that are closest to you really know, really know that. Know us. You know what I mean? God, help those even closest to me to want to come. And he says this. Elisha was fallen sick, wherefore he was going to die. This is 2 Kings 13, 14. And Joash, the king of Israel, came down unto him and wept over his face. Remember, the state and the condition of the nation is on a decline. More immorality is reigning rampant. The idols are, are, uh, everyone's worshiping idols. And he weeps over his father's face. And this is a continuous cycle of sin throughout generation to generation. And he said, something has got to change. Something has to change in this nation. And this was the instructions the Lord gave. Oh, my father, my father, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof. And verse 15 says, And Elijah said unto him, Take thy bow and thy arrows. And he took it unto him, the bow and the arrows. I liken the bow and the arrows to faith in Christ and the word of God. Faith in Christ, your bow, 
faith in Jesus Christ and what he accomplished on Calvary and the word of God are your weapons of warfare. Amen. Your faith and the word of God are your weapons of warfare. And he said, I want you to take the bow and the arrows, which represent the truth, the powerful penetrating with deadly accuracy truth of the word of God. That it doesn't matter what distance the word of God has to go. It is able to lay hold with deadly accuracy what it needs to. And God's judgment of wickedness and sin. Let me say this. Revelation 12, 11 says they overcame him. They overcame, conquered, prevailed, had victory. Who? Satan, the accuser, the troublemaker, the tormentor. By what? The blood of the lamb. Faith in the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. Yeah. What is the yeah. word of their testimony? Glory. What Jesus accomplished is the word of your testimony. What he has done in your life is the word of your testimony. What he did for you is the word of your testimony. Amen. And they loved their lives not unto the death. They did not waver. Amen. And he said to the king of Israel, take thy bow and put your hand upon it. And he did. And what he did was Elijah took his hands and put his hands upon the king's hands. And that represents to me that we need the power of the Holy Spirit. That if you, we can't do it without the power of the Holy Spirit. And how do you access the power of God? You access it through faith in grace and the word of God. And the spirit of God will come upon you. And he gives you power to what? To prevail, to have victory. Amen. And he did what he was told. God is saying, draw near to me and I will draw near to you. But sometimes even as we go forward to do these things, there's a persistence that God wants us to have. Because all, we'll start, but when times get hard, right, right. is when we want to throw down her bow, and throw down our faith, and throw down our arrows. He said, open the window eastward, and he opened it, and he shot. Eastward is where the sun rises. Lord spoke to my heart and said, Angela, the sun is going to rise on this nation again. The Son, Jesus Christ, yeah. is going to rise on this nation again. Open the window and he shot. He shot the word of God. He Listen, and that's why I'm saying there's a, there is a place in prayer for you and I that we need to come to with a persistence and an accuracy with the word of God and our faith. That we are not going to quit. That we are going to be like that persistent widow. Y'all remember the persistent widow who came to the judge? Yes. yes. He said, take thy arrows. And he took them. And he said to the king of Israel, smite them on the ground. And he smote them three times and he stopped. Listen, there's going to be times in our lives where you're going to come to the throne of God and you're going to ask him for something and you're going to ask him to move and you're not going to see it right away. And he said, if you would have kept going, you would have consumed the enemy. But because you didn't, you only got partial victory. Why did you stop? And that's what the Lord was speaking to me when I was getting off that bus. Y'all won some victories today. You ever get out of prayer or worship or service and be like, yeah, whoa, we got this and we're all children are going to heaven and all but and then all of a sudden some things start happening in our lives <laughs> and we stop keep pressing forward that's right that's right that woman 
the persistent widow meant continuing firmly. What? Firmly. Despite difficulty, opposition, continuing to exist and endure over a prolonged period of time. That persistent widow, let me read this and I'm, and I'm going to close now if you want to come up. He spoke a parable, Luke 18, 1, unto them to this end, that men ought to always pray and not to faint. Always what? Pray and do not what? Faint. That means grow weary or weak or fail. Saying there was a city of a judge who feared God, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto to him saying, Avenge me! That means punish or inflict harm on my adversary, my opponent, my enemy, the one that contends me and my children and my family and my nation. Avenge us, punish them, vindicate us. And he would not for a while. But afterwards he said to himself, I don't regard man, I don't regard God. Isn't that what this nation is? I don't regard man, I don't regard God. Yet because the widow troubled him, that means constantly came, and I like this, it was like she was conceiving and birthing. I will avenge her lest she continually come wearying me. <laughs> and the Lord said, hear what the unjust judge had said. And shall not God avenge his own elect? Shall not God avenge his own elect? Which cry day and night unto him through the bearing long with them? Should he not avenge his own elect? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, shall he find faith on the earth? What I am saying to you this morning is, God desires to consume, to put to an end, to cease, to finish every attack against you, every attack against your family, every attack against this nation. But he is asking us as the people of God to rise up. He is asking us as the people of God to smite the arrow upon the ground and not quit until the enemy is consumed. He is asking us to pray always and faint not and to continually come to him. But sometimes we get tired. Y'all stand with me. You can. If you're going to be calling people up, I don't know what, how you're going to finish the service, but I just want to say this. About three and a half weeks ago, the Lord gave me a word, and uh, I've been waiting to hear when the Lord would uh, have me to speak the word. And I knew when, before you started preaching when you said that his word would be delivered precisely when you said those words. That, and maybe I was supposed to give it right then and there, but... I need you to start by, could you please give the testimony of when you went to Patterson, just a brief testimony of what happened whenever you went to Patterson a couple of times back, and how the Lord used you whenever you spoke and the kids responded. Okay. Um, so I go to um, I go to the middle school and the high school on Thursday in Patterson, and um, I've gotten to speak there. There's about 80 kids in the middle school and about 35 in the high school. And um, I was preaching uh, just maybe two weeks ago, and I was talking about salvation. And um, I was preaching to the kids, the gospel, telling them about the love of God. And you can literally hear like a pin drop in there. And uh, they literally were just locked in. The kids were locked in. And they're... Um, I felt the Holy Spirit all over me. Like it was, it, I don't know, when, you, when you're speaking about the Lord, sometimes you can just feel him tangibly. And I felt him. And you can see the kids and even the teachers. The teachers started coming out. Usually we only have like two teachers there for each like lunch session. And um, 
there's about 80 kids three times. So there's 80 kids for three lunch periods in middle school. But anyhow, the, the teachers come out and uh, they were there and I, I gave my testimony and I talked about the love of God and um, I, I said, if you want to receive the Lord, raise your hands. And I, at first I didn't think any of anybody was going to raise a hand because of, you know, prayer pressure, but 30 kids ended up giving their hearts to the Lord and, um, and even a teacher raised her hand and gave her heart to the Lord. So God's just been moving uh, mightily with the young kids and um, even in the high school seeing God move powerfully and God's doing something great there. So she had told me that story a few weeks back and Sabrina had shared a story with me about a week before about how God had used her in a way that she had never been used before whenever she went to uh, the young people's jail, like the, to the detention, and, and how the Lord was using her. And then a couple of weeks later, I was sitting in that chair right there next to Edwina. I was in the, in the church uh, seeking the face of God, and I started to think about, uh, I've been knowing Sabrina a long time, and some of y'all may not even know who I'm talking about, but I was praying to the Lord, and I was like, Lord, the gift that you've given her is becoming so precise. The words that she that you've been speaking yes. through her are, are making their mark in a way like I've never really seen it happen before. And all of a sudden, the Lord began to speak to me. And he said, this word is for Sabrina. This word is for Naya. This word is for any one of my people that would hear my voice and respond. And he began to speak to me. He began to say, my people cry out, why? Why the pain? Why the heartache? Why the sorrow? Why when I turn, I face these? It's as though the enemy is coming to destroy me. No, says the Lord. You are arrows in my quiver. I remove the arrow and I take the shaft. I have a lathe for the shaft. I spin it on the lathe and I straighten the shaft. I have a grinding stone for the head and I sharpen it. And with my own fingers, I tie the feathers to the shaft. And I put you in my quiver and there you wait. And I pull you from my quiver and I flex my bow. And when I release my arrow, for you are my weapon, says the Lord. When I release the, the arrow from my bow, it will find its target and it will hit with precise precision, says the Lord. Wait upon me, trust in me, hold on to me, for I have a plan for you. I am working in you. I am sharpening you. The Lord wants you to know that. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. If we could come up as a church, and I just want to pray. Pray for us. Pray for this nation. Pray for this church. Pray as a people. He commanded them to come and assemble together and wait for the promise of the Father. And it said, His word said, suddenly the Spirit of God fell upon them as clothing tongues of fire.